Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys the ins and outs of working with numbers in PHP. Now, one of the most important data types in PHP is numbers. And a lot of times in our programs, we're going to be working with and doing different things with numbers. So I really just want to give you guys a full introduction into um, what we can do with numbers, how we can use them in PHP. And I'm also going to show you guys some little cool math operations that PHP is going to allow us to do by default. So this is going to be pretty cool. And down here in my PHP tags, I'll just sort of show you guys the bare basics. So I could basically just like, if I wanted to, I could print out a number. And whenever we're typing out a number in PHP, you can just type it out. You don't need to use any quotation marks. You don't need to use any like special characters. You just type out the number and like this will show up over here on the screen. So we get 40. PHP can also handle negative numbers. So I could make a negative number just like that. I could also make a decimal number. So I could say like, um, you know, eight, four, seven or something. And now we have like a negative decimal number. And it's important that you understand the two distinct types of numbers. So in PHP is going to um, differentiate between the two um, a little bit. So this, for example, like 40 would be a whole number. It doesn't have a decimal point. So this is like what we would call an integer number. Um, but then over here, if I put a decimal point on here, uh, now all of a sudden this is what we would call a floating point number or a decimal number. So this just has decimal points after it. So you want to just make sure that you're aware of the difference between those two types of numbers. Honestly, it's not going to like affect anything that much, but just so you're aware that there are those two distinct types of numbers. All right. So in addition to just like printing out a number over here, I could also do arithmetic. So I could perform like math operations. So I could say like echo five, plus nine. And now instead of echoing five plus nine, this is actually going to echo out the answer of five plus nine. So it's going to go ahead and add both of these together. And over here, we should get 14. So you can see PHP actually solved this little math equation that we gave it. So we can use addition, we could also use subtraction, which is just the hyphen, we could use division, which is going to be this forward slash. And we could use multiplication, which is going to be the asterisk. So I could go ahead and multiply like, 5.7 times 9 and over here we should get 51.3 so php is basically able to do you know any math that we throw at it there's also one other operator that i want to show you guys it's called the modulus operator so i could say like 10 percent sign 3 and we would read this as 10 mod 3 and basically what this means is um, modulus operator is going to take 10 it's going to divide it by 3 and it's going to give us the remainder. So 10 divided by three is going to be three with a remainder of one. So over here on the browser, we should get one, which you can see we do. So this is a pretty useful little operation. And there will be certain circumstances where you want to find out the remainder of a division. Another thing I want to show you guys is order of operations. So PHP is going to allow us to specify order of operations. So for example, if I said like four plus five, times 10. What this is going to do is it's going to multiply the numbers first. So it's going to do five times 10 first, and then it's going to add four onto it. So we should get 54, which you can see we do. Um, but let's say I wanted to do the addition first, I could just put parentheses around it. So I could say like four plus five in parentheses. And now PHP is going to honor the order of operations. So we'll end up getting 90 because we're adding four and five, which is nine. And then we're multiplying that by 10. So this just follows normal order of operations rules. Um, if you're familiar with just like normal, you know, math order of operations, then it's the same thing. All right. So in addition to just storing a number or like printing out a number right here, we could also store a number inside of a variable. So over here, I could actually create a variable. Why don't we call this num and I could just set this equal to any number. So I could set it equal to like 10. So I could actually just print this num out. And now we're going to be printing out 10 onto the screen because it's going to print out the value that was stored inside of this number variable. There's also some things we can do. So a lot of times in PHP, you're going to want to increment a variable that has a number in it. So I could say like num and then I could say plus plus. And plus plus is basically just going to add one onto num. So now down here, instead of printing out 10, we're actually going to print out 11. And that's because we use this plus plus, which basically just adds one to the number. So over here, instead of getting 10, we're getting 11. 
You could do the same thing with minus minus. So this will subtract one from the number. So now because we have minus minus, we're gonna end up getting a nine instead of a 10. So that can be pretty useful. Another thing we can do is we can add a number onto this number. So I could say like num, and let's say I wanted to do something like num is equal to num plus 25, right? So basically over here, I'm saying that I want num to be equal to num plus 25. Well, this is actually gonna give us 35, so it'll do exactly what we think it's gonna do. But there's a shorthand for this. So I could actually just come over here and I could say num plus equals 25, and this is gonna do exactly the same thing. So now we should get 35 all the same, which you can see we do. You could also use minus equals, divide equals, and multiplication equals. And basically like multiplication equals would just be the same as saying num times 25, right? It's basically doing the same thing, it's just a shorthand. All right, so all of that stuff can be pretty useful and it can be pretty fun to just kind of play around with that. Um, so another thing I wanna show you guys is how we can use math operations. So there's a lot of like more complex math operations that we might wanna do in our PHP programs. For example, instead of just doing like addition and subtraction, I might wanna like find a square root of a number or um, you know use exponents or you know do something more advanced, some more advanced math calculation. And there's actually these things in PHP called functions. And functions are basically just like little snippets of code that we can call, which will perform a specific operation for us. And we're gonna talk more about functions later in the course, but for now, just know that a function can basically like do something for us in our program. And there's a lot of math functions that we can use in PHP, which will perform math operations for us. So for example, let's say I wanted to find the absolute value of a number. Absolute value is just like, if the number is negative or positive, it's always just gonna give you like the value. So I could just say ABS, I can make an open and close parentheses, and inside of these parentheses, I could put a number. So I could put like negative 100, and this is actually gonna give me back the absolute value of 100. So if I was to print this out over here, you can see we just get 100 instead of negative 100. You can also do a bunch of other math operations. So for example, let's say we wanted to um, take a number to a power, like I wanted to do like two raised to the fourth power or something like that. We could say POW, and in here I could just pass in a two and a four. And now this is gonna give us two raised to the fourth power. So over here we get 16. We could also do like kind of the opposite. So I could, instead of taking a number to a power, I could say square root, so SQRT. And then in here I could pass a number, like if I passed 144, now we're gonna get 12 back. And you can see over here we do. So that can be, you know, that's an easy way to get a square root of a number. Another thing we could do is compare numbers. So I could actually come over here and I could say max. And when I say max, I can pass two numbers into this parentheses. So I could say like two, I'll separate it with a comma, and then I could say 10. And basically what this function's gonna do is it's gonna tell us which of these two numbers is bigger. So what it should do is it should just print out 10 because that's the bigger number. And you'll see over here we get 10. There's another one I can use which is called min. So I could say, instead of max, we could say min. And now this will do the opposite. So it'll tell me which number is smaller. So over here you can see now, instead of 10, we're getting two because two was the smaller of the numbers. So in addition to doing something like that, we could also round our numbers. So let's say I have like a decimal number and I wanna round it up or down. Um, I could just say round and in here I could just pass a number. So I could say like 3.2 and this will round it down to three. So it's gonna round according to just like standard rounding rules. Um, if I had like 3.7, now this will round it up to four. There's also two other functions. So one's called seal. And this is called the ceiling function. And basically, no matter what decimal point is over here, it's always gonna round it up. So no matter what, it's always just gonna round this number up. So you'll see here we get four, even though this is a 3.3. And I can do the same thing um, in the other direction. So I could say floor. And now no matter what, this will round it down. So even if I had like a 3.9 over here, it's always gonna round this number down. So we're always gonna get three. So that's just kind of like a couple of these different math functions that you can use. And to be honest with you, there are dozens and dozens of these math functions that are available in PHP. I mean, there's all sorts of things to do things with like logarithms and you can do stuff with like sine, cosine, tangent, all that stuff. Um, 
I'm not gonna spend time going through every single one. If you'd like to find more of these math functions, you can basically just go online and search PHP math functions. There's a bunch of pages with you know full explanations on how to use all of these guys. But I really just wanted to give you guys an introduction into kind of like all these different operations that you can use and sort of like how you can go about using them. So hopefully you guys learned something. Um, you know, obviously working with numbers is extremely important and numbers is probably the most common type of data that we're gonna be working with in our programs. So you wanna make sure that you have a sort of solid understanding of how numbers work and how you can work with them. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.